Now, we want to talk about something that's very important to you, how your life can be used by God, and also how your, God, how your life can blossom for God. Now, many people hear many messages of God, and they know it, but they cannot apply it. Watu wengi tumesikia ujumbe mbalimbali za Mungu lakini hatuwezi kuitumia kwa maisha. And they cannot make the difference in the world. Na hawaleti tofauti katika ulimwengu. But some people hear the message and then the life is changed totally. Lakini watu wengine wanasikia ujumbe na maisha yao yanakuwa tofauti kabisa. Like in 1998 when the evangelist laid hand on me kama mwaka wa 99 wakati mwinjilisti alimwekea mkono my life changed totally maisha yake ilibadilika kabisa before that i find it hard to raise up the spiritual life of people kutoka hapo sasa akaanza kuinua maisha ya watu juu but after that i found that when i pray for people they experience the love the peace the joy of the lord and then they are willing to follow god na kutoka hapo sasa akiombea watu wanasikia upendo wa Mungu na wanahisi kwamba wanastahili kuendelea kufanya hivyo na kufuata Mungu. I can say that my life is used in a degree much much higher tens of thousand times more powerful than in the past. Kwa hiyo maisha yake yakaanza kutumika kwa njia ya nguvu zaidi mara dufu sana ya vile ilikuwa pale mbeleni. Because I see that the relationship with God is so important. And my life can be, you know, I can be blessing so many people. And there are many places I go to in different countries. And I can see people change surely just in one meeting. Some of you might feel, wow, God is so good. I experience God's presence. It's so good. And your life is changed totally. But some of you might just say, this is another meeting. And you go home about the same as before. And it doesn't stay in your life. Uh, I hope you say, yes Lord, I want to be used by you. Do you want to be used by God? In Psalm 139 verses 16 to 18. There it talks about the days of my life before one of them came to me were written in your book. And the life of each of us, God has a wonderful plan written in heaven. And one day when you go to heaven, You look at what God has planned for you. And you say, I didn't know God's plan is so great. You say, wow, God's plan is so great for me. But how come I can live on so little? That so many people, they found out that, you know, the life of many Christians is, uh, you know, that we're not having influence on people. It's God's plan that we all shine as the light of the world. You know, all the days of our life is written in heaven. And God has planned the best for you. But many Christians have not walked into this perfect plan. And in Romans 12, chapter 12, 1 to 2. Romans 12, 1 to 2. And Paul urges the, 
the Christians to dedicate your body as a living sacrifice. And do not conform to the world. And be transformed by the renewing of the mind. So you discern the uh, the, uh, the good, perfect, and pleasing will of God. Now, say these three things again. Dedicate our bodies a living sacrifice to God. Say it. Dedicate our bodies as I say it in your language. Say that. Kama the bihu ilio hai. And then do not con be conformed to the world. Usiige. 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 But be, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Lakini ugeuzwe kwa kufanywa upia niya yako. Lakini tu geuzwe kwa kufanywa upia niya zetu. So when you do these three things, you will discern the good, perfect, and pleasing will of God. Ukifanya mambo hayo matatu, Unaweza kujua na kutambua mapenzi mazuri ya liyo bola ya lafaa ya mungu. And each one of you, God has a plan that you can bless many other people. Na mungu wa nampaku wa kila moja wetu kubariki watu wengine. Do you want to bless many other people? Unataka kubariki watu wengine wengi. In a short time I'm here, I pray for some of you and you can experience the presence of God. Ile mdo mfupi yako hapa, anaweza kukuambea na unahisi wepo wa mungu. In a few days I'm here in Kenya, there are many other people's influence. So you can see one person can make a big difference. When you find this good, perfect and pleasing will of God, so when you follow this perfect plan of God, your life will be raised to a high level. But some people say, well, I just want to go to church. And one day I go to heaven, that's enough. But some people say, I want my life to be used by God greatly. I don't want to waste my life. I use an illustration. If someone you see in uh, standing by the ocean and just throw money in the ocean. You say, why are you throwing money in the ocean? Give it to me. Don't throw it away. But let me tell you. Our life is more precious than money. A lot of us are throwing a life, our life into the ocean. When you don't use your life for the glory of God, you are wasting it. And one day we'll all stand in front of God. And Jesus will ask you, what have you brought to me? Now in Chinese way of us saying, I brought two bunches of bananas. You know, if someone comes to your home and say, I just brought two bunches of bananas. This are the bananas. <laughs> that means I brought you nothing. So one day you see Jesus and Jesus asks you what you brought. He said two bunches of bananas. Do you want to be like that? And, or do you want to say, Jesus, all these people have been brought in the kingdom of God because I follow your plan. 
ama utataka kumwambia Yesu hawa watu wote wamekuja kwako kwa sababu nilifuata mpango wako and all these people their spiritual life has been, has been revived because i followed your plan na watu wote wametiwa nguvu kwa sababu nilifuata mpango wako and then these people went and bless more people so there's a large crowd because You first help this group and then this group help other people so many many people follow you in the kingdom of God. Na kwa sababu hao nao walienda inakuwa na wapana watu nyuma yao kwa hivyo wewe una upati mkubwa nyuma yako uliobariki. Do you want to be like that? Unataka kuwa hivi. The point is in your heart. Neno ni kwamba what is most important? Katika ndani yako ni nini cha maana kabisa? Some people say if I can eat and sleep and have a job and have children i'm satisfied what we get on a server kama nina kazi nina kula nina kunywa nina kazi tosha hiyo but some people say i want my life to make a difference in the world lakini watu wengine wanasema nataka maisha yangu ilete tofauti duniani you know those people who don't go to heaven one day they have to go into eternal fire of hell ha watu ambao hawataenda mbinguni ujue wataenda katika moto wa milele It's a terrible place. Na unajua ni mahali pabaya sana. And some of your friends, your relatives might be going there. Na pengine kuna watu wenu, rafiki zako, watu wa jamii zenu wanaenda huko. Now some of them might go to church. Na pengine wengine wanaenda kanisani. Some of them might say I'm a Christian. Na wengine wanasema hata mimi ni Mkristo. But their life doesn't show the life of a Christian. Lakini maisha yao hayaonyeshi upendo wa Kristo. We have to help these people too. Ni sisi tuwasaidie watu hawa. Because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7. Kwa sababu Yesu alisema katika Mathayo 7:21. You can write down. Not everyone who says Lord Lord can enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Si kila mmoja anayesema Baba Baba atakaingia mbinguni, lakini wale wanaofanya mapenzi ya Baba yangu wataingia mbinguni. So many people say Lord Lord. Watu wengi wanasema Bwana Bwana. So this is prayer they pray but they have not followed the will of god lakini hawafuati njia za mungu and when they don't obey god na wakati hawatii mungu they don't have a good relationship with god hawana uhusiano mzuri na mungu they may not go to heaven wenda hawataenda mbinguni or they just have wasted their life na mapengine maisha yao tu wameipoteza tu bure bure so in your heart do you have this desire yes i want to serve God more katika ndani yako una hiyo hali ya kuona nataka kumtumikia Mungu zaidi so just now i said in matthew uh, in uh, first uh, romans romans chapter 12 1 to 2 that if you dedicate your life to God and not be transformed by the world but not conform to the world but be transformed by renewal of your mind then you can discern this good uh, perfect and pleasing will of God kama vile inasema katika Warumi 12 mstari wa kwanza na wa pili usipoiga mambo ya ulimwengu lakini ugeuzwe kwa kufanya upya kwa mawazo yako basi utaweza kujua mapenzi yaliyo sawa yanayofaa ya Mungu That means people who don't dedicate their life to God will not discern this perfect will of God Kwa hivyo watu ambao hawapeani maisha yao kabisa kwa Mungu hawawezi kutambua mapenzi ya Mungu When people don't follow God's plan, actually they will suffer. Na wakati watu hawafuati mpango wa Mungu, wanakuwa na hali wanateseka. Let me ask you this. Do you believe that God is good and powerful? Unaamini kwamba Mungu ana nguvu na anaweza? Do you believe his plan is the best? Unaamini mpango wake ndio bora kabisa? Let me tell you. Many people believe that Wacha nikwambie watu wengi wanaamini hivyo but in their daily life they follow the world lakini katika maisha yao ya kila siku wanafuata ulimwengu and i give it a name schizophrenia is like schizophrenia faith is that has schizophrenia that is split is not na kwa hivyo wanapewa eh, neno hili kwamba wanaishi maisha mawili tofauti lakini ni mtu mmoja At the same time they believe God is good and powerful. Wanaamini kwamba Mungu ni mzuri na ana nguvu. At the same time they don't follow God. Lakini tena hawafuati huyu Mungu. When they in trouble they worry. Wakati wako na shida wana kuogopa ama ni kufanya nini? Wanafadhaika. Wanafadhaika. And they think that 
if I live the, my life my way, then I will enjoy the world more. Na wanafikiria kwamba nikiishi maisha yangu vile najua, basi nitafurahia ulimwengu zangu. Let me ask you, when you eat the food, the good food you have eaten so far. Wakati unakula hiyo chakula mzuri kama ile tumekula leo. Is living is it all about eating? Maisha ni kula tu. Are you satisfied just by eating? Sasa kwa sababu umekula umetosheka tu. Are you satisfied that you have a house a bed to, to stay there? Umetosheka una nyumba ya kukaa? How many times can you live? Utaishi mara ngapi? Only once. Can you go back to this morning and relive this morning? If you miss the sermon and you were sleeping in a sermon this morning, can you go back to it again? We only have one time. Our life has two parts. Actually, three parts, I'm sorry. Three parts. The past, the present, the future. The past, you cannot do anything. The present, you can change now. When you change the present, your future will be changed. When I experienced the Holy Spirit, I brought a number of my church members also go to the meeting and they experienced the Holy Spirit too. And some of them continue to serve God with the power of God. But many of them just experience the Holy Spirit and forget about the Holy Spirit. So their life is not changed. But since 1998, I have affected tens and thousands of people. I've seen so many miracles. I, sometimes I cannot believe it. The first time I experienced that a healing was in a meeting soon after I, ex I experienced the Holy Spirit. And then I laid hand on some people and asked them what they have experienced. And one woman jumped up and said, My backache is healed. And everyone in Chamber and said, my shoulder ache is healed. It was God telling me that the miracles in the past can happen today. And I kept praying for more people. And there are all kinds of miracles. Including a cancer healed. One time a woman, she said she has breast cancer. And she had pain for over a month. And the doctor has diagnosed her to have breast cancer. And then she came to my meeting. She actually, she has to travel a long distance to come to my meeting. And then when I prayed for her, she felt a dark force left her breast. And then she felt joy. And she kept laughing in the Lord. And then she said, the pain is gone. And then later she checked. I went to the doctor for a checkup. And the doctor said there is no cancer. I've seen many different miracles. But the miracles I want to see are people's life change. Let me ask you, are you satisfied with your past? If you go to heaven today, will you be satisfied with your whole life 
like in the past. Utasema utaenda ukisema ah ninatosheka Mungu na yale yamefanyika. Will you be coming Jesus with the two bunches of bananas? Ama utakuja tu na hizo ndizi mbili kwa Mungu. Do you want to make a difference? Ama ungependa kufanya tofauti. Some people say one day I want to be an evangelist. Wengine wanaweza sema siku moja nataka niwe mwinjilisti. That is in the future. Hiyo ni siku zijazo. We cannot change the future yet. Siku zijazo hatuwezi badilisha. But you can change the present. Lakini unaweza kubadilisha sasa. If you say Lord Jesus help me to pray more to you. Ukiomba na umwambie Bwana nisaidie kuwa naomba zaidi. Help me to live in your love. Nisaidie kuishi katika upendo wako. And help me to pray for other people. Na nisaidie kuombea watu wengine. And pray for and lay hand on them and pray for them. Na kuwawekea mikono na kuwaombea. And bring them to Jesus. Na kuwaleta kwa Yesu. You start to make a difference. Utaanza kufanya tofauti. What I want to say is in every meeting I've seen a number of people changed. Nataka kusema kwamba kwa kila mkutano ninaona watu wakibadilika. You can do the same. Hata na wewe unaweza kufanya. If you're willing to dedicate your life to God. Kama unataka kuyatoa maisha yako kabisa kwa Mungu. Your life is very precious. Maisha yako ni ya dhamana kubwa. Say the person next to you. Your life is very precious. Now one day when we go to see God, can you bring your money? Can you bring your house? The only thing you can bring to God is your life ni maisha yako and what you have done with your life na kile umefanya na hayo maisha everything else is left behind mabaya mengine yote tayari so what do you have now so far sasa uko na nini ya kule kuelekea bwana do you want your life to be different starting today ungependa maisha yako iwe tofauti kuanzia leo it's very important that we say yes it's most important ni ina maana sana kusema ndio ina maana kabisa How many of you when you hear this you say Lord my past I have wasted so much time ni wangapi wanaweza sema kwamba maisha yangu yaliyopita nimepoteza mengi I want to start to use my life now nataka kuanza kutumia maisha yangu sasa I can bless many people by the help of God naweza kubariki watu wengi kwa msaada wa Mungu If you are willing to pray more kama uko tayari kuomba zaidi and start to pray for people Wanza kuombea watu. You be surprised you have miracles. Utashtuka kwamba hata miujiza itaandamana na wewe. You be very surprised what God can do with you. Utashangaa sana kile Mungu anaweza kufanya na wewe. Let me ask you, how many of you believe in miracles? Say there are miracles today. Please raise your hand. Ni wangapi wanaamini kwamba kuna miujiza siku ya leo? Inua mkono. Thank God. Hallelujah. Please put down your hands. Let me ask you a second question. Swali la pili. How many of you when you pray for someone and then a miracle happened you pray for someone and then a miracle happened not your pastor you you pray for someone and a miracle happened please raise your hand Ni watu wangapi pia wewe na si pastor si mchungaji unaombea watu na miujiza inafanyika Ni mkono juu There are few very good. Iko watu wachache na ni mzuri sana. But not good enough, right? Lakini hiyo haitoshi. You be surprised. Utashtuka sana. Because Jesus said signs that means miracles will follow those who believe. Kwa sababu Yesu alisema miujiza itaandamana na walio amini. Walio amini. Do you really want that? Unataka hivyo? Let me tell you. When you ask many young people, do you want to go to the university? They will say, yes, I want to go to the university. And then you ask them, are you willing to put down your game and start to study? And they say, no, 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 later, later. I will study later. And then later they say, Later, na baadaye wanasema baadaye. They want to go to the university but they don't want to pay the price. Wanataka kwenda chuo kikuu lakini wanataka kulipa kulipa gharama. They say later. Wanasema baadaye. But later might never happen. Lakini hiyo baadaye huenda isifike. You might want to pray for someone later. Ungependa ungependa kuombea mtu mwingine baadaye. But it might not happen. Lakini huenda isifanyike. Unless you say I want to do it. 
mpaka useme nataka kufanya hivi let me tell you the day why when i experience the holy spirit wacha niwaambie wakati alihisi roho mtakatifu wa mungu when i experience this love of god kila alihisi ni upendo wa mungu I went home and I kept on praying. Akaenda nyumbani tu na alikuwa tu anaendelea kuomba. For a long time. Wa muda mrefu. And later one day I experienced the joy of the Lord. Na siku nyingine baadaye akahisi upendo wa Mungu. And the joy of the Lord just kept coming. Na fire of the Lord will talk. And I really want to keep the joy of the Lord. Na alikuwa anataka kuweka hiyo fire of Mungu. On the way when I went home in the bus. Ndani ya basi akienda nyumbani. I Kept loving God to have the joy of the Lord. But I was in the bus, so I did not laugh out loud. I laughed like this. <laughs> And when I went home, I kept the joy of the Lord. And the next day, I kept praying. So I paid the price. Also when I when I saw people I asked them, are you willing uh, to experience God? God can come to bless you. Would you like me to pray for you? I asked many many people. Some people will say I don't want it. But I say it doesn't matter. If they don't want it, it's their own choice. I will keep doing it even when people reject me. But many people stop evangelism when people reject them. Also, I was not afraid to ask people what you have experienced. After they told me what they experienced and then I said you experience God and God has blessed you do you want God to continue to bless you Na wakati walisema wamehisi Mungu aliwauliza aliwaambia huyo ni Mungu ungependa Mungu endelee kubariki And when they were willing then I brought them to believe in Jesus Na wale ambao walitaka kuendelea kusikia vizuri ndani ya Bwana aliwa Or if they're Christians I brought them to love Jesus more Na kama ni wa Kristo aliwasaidia kupenda Mungu zaidi I was I spent time praying first first I spent time praying Second I was not afraid to approach people to ask them is it okay for me to pray for you Japo la pili hakuogopa kwenda kwa watu na kuuliza niombe na wewe niombe na wewe And then after I pray I asked them I was not afraid to ask them have you experienced anything Na japo la tatu baada ya kuombea hakuogopa kuuliza ume kuna kitu chochote kimefanyika And after they experience something I continue to help them to follow Jesus. Na wakati walisema ndio au walivyosema akawasaidia kufuatana na Yesu. And I also help people to love God more. Na akawasaidia hata kupenda Mungu zaidi. In this way I have brought many people to Christ and brought revival to many people. Na kwa njia hiyo ameleta wengi kwa Kristo na akaleta uvuvio kwa watu wengi including these few people who came with me from Hong Kong. Hata hawa wachache ambao wamekuja naye kutoka huko Hong Kong. They are also learning from me. Wanajifunza ni wanafunzi wake. I continue to encourage them. Anaendelea kuwatia moyo. And they see that the life can be used by God more. Na wanaona haya kumbe maisha yangu inaweza tumia na Mungu hata zaidi. And they are willing to pay the price to buy the plane ticket and pay the price to come here. Na walikuwa tayari kulipa gharama na wakakuja mpaka hapa. But first I pay the price in order to help people. Lakini kwanza mimi ninalipa gharama ili niwasaidie watu. And they also pay the price to follow God. Nao pia wamelipa gharama ya kufuatana na Yesu. Are you willing to pay the price? Uko tayari kulipa gharama. Are you willing that you go on today you keep praying. Lord Jesus you're so wonderful. Uko tayari kuendelea kuomba kwamba Bwana wewe ni wa ajabu sana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. Mungu wewe ni mwema sana. Continue let the peace of God stay in you. Na una unaomba kwamba amani ya Mungu iendelee kukaa ndani yako. And then practice with Christians. Na unafanya hivyo na wakristo wengine. And then you go and pray for other people. Na unaenda sasa unaombea watu. Are you willing? Okay.
If I just if I'm just only willing to do one thing. Kama kuna kitu moja tu naweza kufanya. My life will not be totally changed. My life will not be totally changed. Maisha yangu haitabadilika. I've seen many people experience the Holy Spirit. They like worship. Nimeona watu wengi waki wakihisi uwepo wa Roho Mtakatifu wanapenda kuruka na kumchezea Mungu na kumwabudu. Hallelujah. 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 They like worship. Hiyo ni mzuri wanapenda. But you tell them go out to do evangelism. Lakini waambie sasa tuende tukawafikie watu na Yesu. They will do this sign. Watasema I worship yes. But you do tell anything. Lakini ukisema It has happened to many Christians. Imefanyika kwa Wakristo wengi. And one day you find out that suddenly you have to face God. You know, it will come to us suddenly one day. And our life is gone. So it's better to start with today. Do you really treasure your life? And then you start to change. Now here I talk about some Bible passages that talk about a strong anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now just now I talk about how your life can be used by God. God has a wonderful plan in your life. God wants to use your life. Are you willing to pay the price to follow Christ? And here I talk about how some people in the in the Bible are full of the power of God. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, beginning in verse 5, it talks about a group of prophets they were praising God with musical instruments. And then they were prophesying. And at that time, Samuel, the prophet, anointed Saul to be the first king of Israel. And then he told Saul to go to this group of prophets. And he said, you'll be changed to a new person. And you have to do what you need to do because the Lord is with you. And when Samuel finished talking with him, suddenly he was changed to a different man. And when he went to see the prophets, he started to prophesy. That he was filled with the Holy Spirit. So that is how strong the anointing was. When a group of people kept praying, and then people come to the place, and they will be transformed. Uh, on a Friday night when we had the overnight prayer meeting at Pastor Nicholas Church. And in the meeting, some people suddenly experience the Holy Spirit. Also, in another church that we went to, and then the Holy Spirit also came very strong. And I lay hand on this sister, praise. And it's been, she began to have the joy of the Lord. That it came powerful upon her. So that was a meeting with a strong presence of God also. And there were so many people who, who experienced the joy of the Lord also. 
So these are experiences of a strong presence of the Holy Spirit. Now another passage is Acts chapter 5 verses 15 to 16. And then people brought sick people to the street. And then wait for Peter to pass by, and then these people would be healed when Peter passed by. So there was a strong presence of God with Peter and the apostles. And also Paul and Silas. And they were in prison. But they kept praising God. And then there was an earthquake. And all the chains got loose. Don't think that this won't happen today. It was a strong presence of God. And we experienced that in a in a few meetings we have here in now, Kenya. Now, and last night I prayed with Pastor Nicholas. And he shared with you how he felt a change in his life. And this morning, though all of us can pray together, and we experience the joy of the Lord. In order to do to do great things for the Lord, we need a strong presence of God. Now I want to tell you, without a strong presence of God, you can still serve God. All of you can start to serve God now. But when you have a strong presence of God, the ministry is totally different. I'm surprised with the miracles I face. One time I went to a house to visit a house. That house has you know, Chinese idols and has two electrical uh, uh, candles there that, that they worship the idols. Because the mother and the daughter came to my church. And they have a grandmother that they like me to visit. And I pushed the doorbell. The moment I pushed the doorbell, the two candle lights burned. Suddenly, the light went out. When I pushed the doorbell. And the grandmother said, wow, this is, this is supernatural. When I pushed the doorbell, the candles to the idols burned. <laughs> it, it shows God's presence and God's pleasure in the world. It shows God's presence and God's pleasure. I saw a woman who had a stroke and half of the body could not move well. Mm. And after the prayer, she lifted up her arms and lifted up her legs. I'm surprised with these miracles. With the presence of God. I went to one place, one man said, my eyes are blurry. I cannot see clearly. And after the prayer, he said, I can see clearly now. And one year later, I went to the same place. This man came a long way. He came to tell me, one year ago you prayed for me, my eyes got clear, and after today my eyes are still clear. I'm surprised with these miracles. 
One time there was one lady who was very old and he has all kinds of health problems. And the doctor says she will surely die. And she will suffer before she dies. So they have to use medicine to, to reduce the pain. And the daughter asked me to go and pray for the mother. When I pray for her, I ask her what she experienced. She said, I felt comfort. And, and I said, are you willing to accept Jesus as your Savior? But she said, no, I have been worshiping Buddha. So she was not willing to believe in Jesus. Half a year later, suddenly, she said to, to, to the daughter, Where is Pastor Yip? Why didn't he come today? I haven't gone for half a year. And that was the last day she was clear. After that, she, you know, sometimes she slept for a long time. And I believe it's God telling her to think about me. So the daughter called me and then I went. I prayed for the old lady and asked her what she experienced. She said, I felt great comfort. I asked her, did Buddha do that to you? She said, no. So I asked her, do you want the true God or the false God? And she said, I want a true God. And she was baptized right then. I baptized her. And one night in the middle of the night, her daughter saw her open her eyes and look at the ceiling and she was smiling and looked from one side of the ceiling to the other side. And then she closed her eyes and went back to sleep. And her daughter believed that she saw some visions Maybe she saw Jesus or heaven or the angels. And she also told her family members to believe in Jesus. Just by prayer to her, I brought the whole family to Jesus. Whenever I go any place, I would try to pray for everyone. The other day I went to Pastor Nicholas, a sister's home. And I actively go, the pastor never asked me to do it, but I actively go to pray for the sister and her husband. I pray for them twice. And then I still feel I need to do something more. I went and sit down with them and talk to them about their salvation and their relationship with God. I just want to bless more people. I hope you have this heart of God. When you want to bless more people, the presence of God will come strong upon you. With the strong anointing of God. Now let me tell you one more thing. This lady in the back in black, she's, her name is Mandy. She has made up her mind to to follow me, not to, of course to follow Jesus, but to serve with me. Because she hears from the Lord too. She hears the voice of the Lord. And one day she asked, uh, Jesus asked, uh, she asked uh, Jesus, 
What should I learn from Pastor Yip? Na siku moja akamuuliza Mungu, sasa nitajifunza nini kutoka kwa huyu mzee pastor? And Jesus answered her. Na Yesu akamwambia, You should learn the life of Pastor Yip. Wewe jifunze maisha yake. Now when I heard that I feel actually I feel very humble. When I experienced the Holy Spirit, I was not a strong pastor. It was God who transformed me. And I started to take care of my life. And I can bless so many people now. It's because God came to me in love to help me, to fill me up. And now I can continue to bless so many people. I'm surprised. One time one woman that had nails in the back from the surgery. And she says she had great pain. Every every night her husband has to do this to her back. To reduce the pain. And with the prayer the pain went away. You can be like that too. You can have the strong anointing of the Holy Spirit. How can you have the strong anointing of the Holy Spirit? Do you want the strong anointing of the Holy Spirit? Then you see miracles happen. I have put many of my miracles on the internet in YouTube. If you can get on internet, go to YouTube and search Pastor Yip Yip. Or go to Facebook and look for Pastor Yip. Yip. And you can see my meetings. And many people call me to ask for help. And I pray for them and they get healed. Or demons driven out. And I want to say you can do it too. Say to the person next to you, you can do it too. Amen. When you hear all this, is your heart moved? Do you want to do something more with your life? Are you satisfied with your life? Are you willing to pay the price? Okay, very, we're going to practice praying in a moment to help you experience the Holy Spirit more. But before that, I'll tell you a few points what you need to do every day to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I hope you continue to do it. So you should write down. The first point is, say no to sins. When any sin comes into your mind, believe that it is very destructive. It will destroy your life. Then immediately say, I follow God, I don't want to follow sin. If this is your husband or wife who is not nice to you, and he or she says something unpleasant, and in your mind you say, I don't like you. I hate you. Is that right? That is sin. The moment we have that anger, the blood goes up in your head. And then you say, this is sin. It's destructive. If I sin, my life will be destroyed. Now, let me ask you, if you, if I have committed a serious sin, your pastor will not allow me to come back. 
I would destroy my ministry. Sins would destroy our life. So I treasure my life and I don't want to sin. Anytime I have sinful thoughts, immediately I say this is destructive. destructive. And I pray to God. And I say no to the sin. You can do it. But this will take more time to explain. I, 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 you know, I just the point is, you find your way to pray to God to say no to sins. So first point, say no to sins. And the second is follow the Bible. Number two, The Bible is very beautiful and very sweet. The Bible is full of the wonderful promises of God. Today I describe the love of God by, from the Word of God. So I hope you love the Word of God and follow the Word of God. And number three, have faith in God. That he is in front of me and behind me. He's laying his hand on me. And nothing can separate the love of God from me. Now, if this is you, and this is God coming to you, his love will hold on to you. And nothing can separate the love of God. The love of God will stick to you. And nothing can separate that. So when you pray, have faith that God is loving you right now. His love is with you now. When you pray for the sick people, you might say, oh, when I pray, there's no power, no healing. But you want to say, God's love is with me now. And with that person, when I have faith, God can bring healing. So when you pray to God, you can just enjoy God. Because we believe God is working. Remember the prayer of grace? Oh, Jesus is loving me and loving that person. Jesus cares about us. Jesus will come to bless. And when you pray for the Holy Spirit, believe that he will come. He will surely come. Don't say, God, where are you? But you say, God is right here. I can enjoy God now. He will fill me with the Holy Spirit. So three is faith. Four is pray with your spirit. Spirit, praise, you know, worship in spirit and in truth. That means your whole mind agrees with the word of God. Everything God says is true. Your whole will is willing to follow God. And your emotions, you know, because our spirit, our soul include the, the mind, the will, and the emotions. And your emotion is, oh, God is so good. I like, I, I like God. You always say, God is so good. When you like God, God will fill you with the Holy Spirit. And also Psalm 103 verse 1. 
All that is within in me will praise His holy name. Kila kitu ambacho kiko ndani yangu kitatukuza jina lake takatifu. So when you pray 103 verse 1. So when you praise God, kwani wakati unamtukuza Mungu, praise with your whole soul. Eh mtukuze na nia yako yote. Jesus I love you. Eh unasema kwa Mungu Yesu nakupenda. Oh Jesus Lord. Eh Yesu ni Bwana na Yesu ni upendo. Pray with your whole soul. Yaani omba na nia yako yote. And God will come to bless you. Na Mungu atakuja so that's number four. Pray in spirit. Number five, follow the Great Commission. Tano, fuata maagizo makubwa, the Great Commission. Preach the gospel. Yoni kubiri jin. And teach people to obey everything Jesus has taught. Na kuwafundisha watu kufuata kila kitu Yesu wali wafundisha. And Jesus will be with us. Yesu, kwa pamoja nasa. And number six, sita, the laying of hands does help us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit-filled meetings also will help. I'm going to do a Spirit-filled meetings in a few minutes. And then number seven, take care of different problems in our life. Shugunikia shida zilizo katika maisha yako. Do not be affected by your husband or wife. Usiwache bibi yako ama bwana yako akudhuru. If they say unpleasant words to you. Hata ukikwambia mambo mabaya, do not be affected by negative emotions. Hata hisia ambayo isikudhuru. Choose to thank God and be joyful all the time. Amua kufurahia bwana na kuwa na furaha kila wakati na kumshukuru. Believe that no one can take away the blessings from you. Na uamini kwamba hakuna mtu anaweza kukunyang'anya baraka zake. If your husband is not nice to you, he cannot take away God's blessing. Hata kama bwana wako si mzuri, hawezi kutukua baraka za Mungu. You turn around and praise God, God's blessing will be on you. Wewe tu unageuka unamtukuza Mungu na baraka zake zinakujia. Okay, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Let's go through again. Kwa hivyo tuangalie hayo mambo ya kuwa kuendelea katika Roho Mtakatifu. You remember? First Say no to sins. Say it. Say it with him, with Pastor. Say no to sins. Useme a a kwa dambi, ama ukata ya dambi. Say. Tuseme hivyo. Kata ya dambi. Kata ya dambi. Number two, Bible. Number two, Biblia. Biblia. Number three, faith in God. Tatu, imani kwa mungu. Imani kwa mungu. Four, worship in spirit and in truth. Abudu kwa kweli na kwa roho. Abudu kwa kweli na kwa roho. For as long as you can every day. Kila siku kwa yale masaa yote unaweza. Spend a long time loving God. Na uchukua muda mrefu kumpenda Mungu. And then whatever you do, you praise God at the same time. Na chochote chochote unachokifanya, mtukuze Mungu wakati huo huo. And number 5. Tano. Preach the gospel. Hubiri injiri. Situsame hubiri injiri. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Hubiri injiri. Tusame tena. And help people to and help people to to follow God. Hei, na kusaidia watu kumfuata mungu. And number six, lay on of hands, that's help. Na sita, kueke watu mikono inasaidia. And spirit field meetings help. Na pia mikutano iliyo na uwepo wa Roho Mtakatifu inasaidia. And number seven, take care of different problems in life. Na saba, shughulikia shida tofauti katika maisha. Let me tell you, if anyone says anything unpleasant to me, wacha niwaambie, mtu yote akisema kitu kibaya kunihusu, I've chosen not to be affected. Nimeamua kwamba hiyo mimi sitajishughulika shabani. If I've done something wrong, I'll say sorry. Kama nimefanya kitu makosa nitasema pole. But if he says anything unpleasant, it, is, it won't come true. Because he is controlled by sin. It's like words of Satan. I only believe in the word of God. Words of Satan, I'll say no. He might be yelling at me. But I say, well, it's his problem. And he might have been hurt by many people. 
Pengine kuna watu wengi wamemuumiza. So I have compassion on him. Lakini mimi ninamhudumia. And bless you. Na ninambariki. That way you take care of different problems in your life. Na hiyo unashughulikia shida nyingi maishani mwako. Okay. Now. So today I talk about God's perfect plan is great. Say it. Sema kwamba mpango wa Mungu ni mkuu. Mpango wa Mungu ni mkuu. Si tuseme na nguvu kidogo. Mpango wa Mungu ni mkuu. And we want to make the best use of our life. Tungependa kufanya vile vyote vile na maisha yetu. And the first the second part we talk about is anointing. Jambo la pili ambalo tumeongea ni kuhusu upako. And anointing of God can be very powerful. Na upako wa Mungu unaweza kuwa na nguvu sana. So seek after the anointing of God. Kwa hivyo tafuta upako wa Mungu by following the seven things I told you. Na kufuata mambo hiyo saba ambayo tumefundisha. Every day. Kila siku. And then you go out and pray for people. Na uende huko na uombea watu. You find that people will experience the presence of God. Na utapata watu wanaanza kuhisi uwepo wake. And you bring them to Jesus. Na utawaleta kwa Yesu. Now after you hear this I hope you say yes Lord I want to change my life. Nadhani kwamba ukisikia utasema ndio Bwana nataka kubadilisha maisha yangu. Let me tell you before experience the Holy Spirit. Wacha niwaambie kabla haja hisi uwepo wa Roho Mtakatifu. What it can bring to Jesus is very little. Kile ambacho unamletea Mungu ni kidogo sana. And after I experience the Holy Spirit. Lakini baada ya kupata nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. What it can do with with my life can be unlimited. Kile ambacho nafanya na maisha yangu hakina mipaka. And you too. Hata na wewe pia. To tell the person next to you. Ambia huyo karibu na wewe. God can use your life in unlimited ways. Mungu anaweza kutumia maisha yako bila mipaka. Now when you hear this is your heart moved? Sasa ukisikia hiyo unasikia moyo moyo wako uki I want to carry a strong anointing of God. Unasisi kwamba nataka upako huo wa Mungu. I want to see more healing. Nataka kuona uponyaji zaidi. I want to see people saved. Nataka kuona watu wakiokoka. And in heaven there are a lot of people following me. Na mbinguni kuna watu wengi nyuma yangu. Okay, now right now what I'm going to do is to have you all come out and pray together for anointing. Kwa hivyo nataka sasa tuje sisi wote hapa ili tuone upako for a stronger presence upon you. Ili uwepo wa Mungu uje juu yako. Do you hunger for that? Una una kiu ya hiyo? Man. So we'll pray together and I tell you if you let go of yourself and relax. Kwa hivyo nataka kwa mimi uki ukijiachilia kwa Mungu usikuwe unajishika sana. You will enjoy the process. Utafurahia. And some of you may experience the power the Holy Spirit in a very powerful way. Na wengine wanaweza kuhisi kwa nguvu sana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you Father. Amen. Okay, so are you willing to come forward and put your hands in circle here? Oh Lord Jesus. Bwana Yesu. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Asante, Jesus. Asante, Jesus. Asante, Jesus. Say with excitement. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is good. I need Jesus. Lord Jesus, I want you. Lord Jesus, I want you. 
Tumia bibi yetu kumwambia bwana kitu. Sikae tu tumekauka. So, in a very urgent way. Oh. 